Hey, everybody. So great to be here. Um, I'm actually a year late because my goal was to come here last year to speak when my, pra my new scratch practice was open for about a year and a half. But it took an extra year. But my numbers are better now. So yeah, my name's Dr. Steve Mascaren. Um, I'm the owner, operator of Taunton Village Dental. Um, I've had four practices I previously started from scratch. And I never really listened to what John taught me. So this time I said, screw it. I'm going to put away everything I did. I sold my other three practices. And um, just for fun, I opened this up one, this one up from scratch two and a half years ago. And um, it's been an incredible success by all metrics. So today we're going we're gonna to share with you uh, what our secrets are, like how we did it, and um, how you can do it too. So um, my name is Sherry Fitzpatrick. I'm the Director of Operations at Taunton Village Dental. Um, I met Steve about three and a half years ago. And when I met him, it was, uh, the office was actually at the beginning stages of a construction site. At that time, I was actually hired to be the assistant that was supposed to be the director when the office opened. Within a, a few couple of months, she actually moved on in her career, and I was temporarily thrown into this job. I had no management experience. I've always worked in dental, but I had no management experience. Steve put me in a temporary job. He hired somebody. Um, at that point, I took that as an opportunity. I thought, you know what, I can do this. So um, I can honestly say that I ran a construction company, a, a construction site of construction workers to open the practice. I hired all of our staff, including the dentist, um, did all the equipment order, put the office together. And I can um, proudly say that today, within two and a half years, we have over 11,000 active patients in our database. We have at about an 80% retention rate to our patients. Um, we have 43 amazing team members. We see 400 new patients every single month. And uh, just last year in 2019, with it just only in two years of business, we billed $1 million per chair within two years of being opened. So, yay. Yeah, so, you know, I was, I was getting so frustrated with, the typically, the typical average dentist opens up a scratch practice. Um, they rent a place with like five operatories or six, oper six operatories, and they plumb six and you start with three, you open a couple of days a week, and as it grows, you're gonna add more. And I, it just, it doesn't happen, it never happens that way. And you know, after listening to John for so long about his Walmart and Bass Pro Shop analogies, I'm like, yeah, it's just, it, why are dentists, why don't dentists think like corporations? So we decided this time to open up full on seven days a week from scratch, fully, fully staffed, when I say fully staffed, not fully staffed for like a full patient base, but we always had you know, dentists, hygienists, and uh, staff available, and fully trained the Chris Ad way. And um, you know, we just, I think you want to go to the um, next one. Yeah. Yeah, like think like a corporation. You, you, if you don't have co things available to sell, and your things that are available to sell are those hygiene appointments and dentist appointments. And if you don't have tons of them available that people can call you and make it easy for them to come in, you're never gonna grow. You're just gonna, just like Justin talked about um, pre, prior to me, you're never gonna go. Where do those patients go? They just kind of disappear because there's no place for them. Um, one of the things too is, um, you know, in today's dental, dental uh, world, the market's competitive. There's a dental office on every corner. So you need to have a strong customer service um, um, message to give to your patients. So we took the, um, these industry leaders in customer service and applied their, their tactics, you know, they're open late, there are lots of availability, tons of products on the shelf. You don't go into Walmart and um, order a product and go back two weeks later to pick it up. They have tons of available, uh, their, their product, it's always there, hot and ready food. Um, Starbucks customizes your order, you can ask for any kind of coffee and they're gonna make it exactly the way that you want it. Put your name on it and smile when they give it to you. We, had, we took a lot of those philosophies and we applied it, and that's basically what Chris Ad has taught us to do. So we're gonna share with you three big things that, that uh, we did that we think are like the key things that made us uh, super successful um, since we opened two and a half years ago. Number one is how we developed our culture um, and our core values and our mission statement before we opened up. 
we, you know, I had a vision of how I wanted things to be, what kind of a culture and what kind of a vibe I wanted people to feel when they walk into the office, and what kind of people I wanted to support, what kind of team I wanted. So we, I'm gonna to talk to you about how we did that, how we developed that culture, that's number one. Second thing, I'm gonna, we're gonna to talk to you about how to deal with and address all of the, the, the things with, that patients, the public is looking for now, from John's research, that uh, chart here with all the red stuff on it. Like, you have to get into the consumer's head, into the dental patient's head, and you, you need to address all of those things about honesty, trustworthiness, cleanliness, not the other stuff that's not important. And then the third thing we're gonna talk to you about is the obstacles that we had starting, the, starting this practice, and the obstacles we continue, always having obstacles, and how we deal with them, what we've done to overcome them. Yeah. So, um, one of the things right away was when I started with Steve, he already had Chris Ad on his team. So, um, right away, the most important thing when you're starting a practice is you need to develop a brand. You need to have a branding that um, is recognizable to the community so that people remember your logo. If you think of Walmart, you can close your eyes, you know what Walmart looks like. In any Walmart you go to in Canada, the logo is the same. You have to keep your branding with everything you do consistent. And that's why we allow Chris Ad to do that for us. Anything that we use in our office, whether it is stationary, whether it's postcards, whether it's our signage, um, our posters that we use, we go through them for the design so it's all consistent with the fonts, the images, everything. And one of the most important things that they take care of for us with just like a sigh of relief is they help us with our marketing. So one of the biggest things that we generate most of our patients from is our mail outs. So you have to do your mail outs monthly. Um, when we first opened, we did heavily, heavy mail outs and then we started doing them smaller amounts um, every single month. Um, you know, I always thought, you know, mailers, like it's, it's an old school way, but you know what, we took it away for like a couple of months and within a couple of months we had a drastic decline in our patient volume. So we were able to figure out what was working and what wasn't working and the, mail, the mailers, they definitely work. They say it takes the consumer an average of three impressions before they finally decide to pick up the phone or walk into your office. So that could be three times that they have to get your brochure in the mail before they decide to pick up the phone. Or it could be a combination of they drove past your office, saw the logo, remembered that logo in their head, went home, went through their mail, oh, there's a brochure, you know, it, it, it triggered them. And then they went onto your website, which Chris had made for us. And then they visit the site and then they decide to pick up the phone. So what Chris Ad does is we send out our mailers um, on a rotational basis of households, um, like different postal codes or zip codes, and we rotate them. So every three months, that household will get our, our mailer, but um, you have to be diligent about it. You can't just expect 1,000 phone calls after one mailer. You have to do it every single month. Yeah, and also before you go, the next, go back to the marketing slide. Okay, sorry. Yeah, you have to listen to uh, Chris Ad and do exactly what they tell you. Like, I, you know, when I first started this office, John sent me that logo, and I thought it was so lame. I go, what is this? It's not even like I could do my, I mean, kid could do a better job. Like, more like, you know, contemporary. But no, he goes, trust me, it's got to be, you, you need to be trustworthy, like you're an established dental office, and even put a deer in the thing. I don't understand that. But the, the signage is the most number one thing right now to have incredible signage that people cannot miss. Because they keep driving by, they notice you, they notice you, they notice you, then they get your mailers, and, um, and then you gotta make it easy to get a, uh, for them to pick up the phone and call you with Google. But also, it, it, it's also critical, if you're opening a scratch office, don't do any external marketing until you're ready to answer the phones and intake patients the same day because you'll be inundated with calls, and if you can't handle them, it's really bad. Because those patients are gonna, go, they're gonna call none of the dentist right away. They're gonna hang up the phone, and just gonna be a sideshow. So, um, so one of the most important things next to our patients in our dental office is our team. So we have a team of 43 individuals now. These are some of the pictures of us. We are a highly efficient, high, high operating um, team. We, our team has all been handpicked 
through a unique um, hiring process that I do. It's not a typical hiring process that I do. And they 100% have been hired based on the fact that they fit into our co company culture. We don't talk about experience. I don't care if somebody has experience. Um, when I do my interview, I ask cultural interview questions. All of these people that are on this team literally live and breathe by what we stand for. They want the, their company to honestly do well. They take great pride in the office that they work at. We are a community-based office. We do tons and tons of community service work in our community together. We do workshops together. We do um, day trips and excursions together. Everyone literally is, um, we support each other, even if we have people that come into our office and they have future goals without, with, without even staying in our office, we help them with those things as well. So we invest a lot into our team and they, they deliver back 100%. So one of the biggest, the one of the one of the things that we do every year. This is our biggest charity that we do. I just wanted to show you guys this, just so you guys can kind of get a vibe of what our culture is like. We do um, a free dental day, and uh, just 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 to show you what our office really is about. I'm just going to share this video. said come on down he's actually the mayor in our town so he came to, to honor our special day <laughs> so much fun yeah it was um, so when you say culture is important we had to decide well what culture did we want to have like you can't just say you want great culture you have to actually identify what your company culture is going to be so we actually put on a workshop where our entire team came in we Closed the office for a day. Steve closed the whole office. No production for an entire day. And Ouch. we, yep. And we sat together and we decided, what do we want our office to be known for? What kind of vibe do we want to give out? And plus, what do we want our team? What kind of an environment do we want our team and future employees to know the company that they work for? So we sat down together and collaboratively came up with what was most important. And then um, we display them right in the front reception. Right when patients walk in, it's right there, right in their face. It, sh it just shows a purpose that patients come in and they know that this office actually d really does care about the quality of care that they're delivering. And also our employees walk by and they read it all the time. When an employee gets hired in our office, we actually give them a wallet size copy of the core values and mission statement on, on it, and I actually make them memorize it. And I'll quiz them throughout the day at any given time, and they have to tell me what the core values are. And it's not because I'm testing them, it's just when you say something every day, you start to really believe what you're saying. And you know, sometimes you know, it could be a long day, we have long shifts and emergencies, and we're tired, but constantly remembering the, the way that you, the, the the vibe that you've set out and what you want to live by, it just kind of just makes you come together as a team again and just get through that day. Yeah, your, your core values, that's what supports the culture of your, of your environment. And that's what people live and breathe by. And they, when they see, like, you know, when our team walks by and they, they, they have their little pocket things they carry with them, and they see this on the wall, and when patients are at the desk doing whatever they're doing, they all look at these things, and maybe they don't, it doesn't, like it, it resonates with them because they, they look at them and they think, yeah, that's true, they, they are guest obsessed. It is effortless, it was so easy. Mm -hmm. They really walk, walk, walk the talk. Yeah. So I'll just show you 
um, our mission statement. So basically, our mission statement is we provide exceptional guest experience customized to each individual and unique needs in a positive, caring environment that will astound you at every interaction. We are basically looking for the wow factor when people come into our office. We have set out um, systems, and we can get into those in a bit, um, that we know are proven if we do everything that we have trained our staff to do and the, um, and the systems that we put in place, we know our patients will, will be astounded when they leave our office. So that's just a constant reminder to our staff and patients that that's actually what we thrive for. Um, and then our core values. So we actually have, well, Steve came up with a short version, and we call it WeGo in the office. Um, so basically, it's the four points of our, uh, this is basically what represents Taunton Village Dental. So we hire and train the best. So like I said, we don't hire people with experience, really, and I'll get into what we do um, soon. But when we say we hire and train the best, is we hire and train the best people that fit what we want for an individual. We take great pride in that. Every single one of our employees know that they've been handpicked. We get tons and tons of resumes in all the time to work in our office, so when someone knows that they work there, we make it known that like you have been selected to work here, and they take great pride in that. And the fact that they know we hire and only train the best, they, they feel important, and that's the way that you have to make your, your staff feel. Um, effortless. You know, we, we want to make our patient's experience as effortless to them as we possibly can. You know, from the minute they pick up the phone to call us, we keep those phone calls like to a minimal under a minute. You know, we get them in right away. Don't ask them a lot of questions. Tons of parking, lots of signage so that they can see where they're going. They're not looking for where is this dental office. Um, we take care of all the pricing. We take ownership for the insurance and we, we offer patients uh, same day treatment within 24 hours. And we basically just take all, over all of the responsibility for the patients. Most patients don't understand insurance anyways. We take all that ownership off of them so that they can just come in and just get done what they need to have done. Guest obsessed. We don't call our patients patients, we call them guests. They really are our guests. Our office is like our home and we want people to come in and feel like they're our guest and we're treating them like they're a guest in our home. Um, operational excellence. We have put a lot of time and energy into the, our systems and the, and the strategies that we've come up with, that is, which is why we've become so successful. We, we've put, um, we have a manual for every single um, position, every single uh, sterilization, everything. We have manuals. When we set people out to succeed. If a staff member doesn't do well, in our office, it's our fault that they didn't. So we go back to training, we, feel, we, we make sure that everyone will be successful once they're employed with us. So one of the things that I was talking about with um, we don't hire with experience is we actually hire, so like I said, culture is more important to us than skill. You can teach, teach somebody a skill. You can teach them how to um, learn insurance, whatever. You can't teach person the right culture, the right attitude. So when we hire, I will have to say, when I first started working for Steve, uh, John and Corey, and I think it was Matt as well, they showed up when it was still under construction, and they came just to check out the location. And I remember John and Corey had said, Oh, when you guys hire your team, make sure you hire people with no, ex you know, hire people with no experience. Like, just hire people from hospitality or the serving industry. And I was like, what? Like, that's crazy. You can't hire people with no experience. De there's so much in dental that you have to know. Really, there isn't. You know what I mean? You have to just know a few basic things, except if you're a dentist or a hygienist. But for other stuff, you don't, there really isn't. You can teach people that. So I didn't listen to that part, and I hired people with a lot of dental experience. And with that, we're open seven days a week from 7 uh, 6 a.m. till 9 p.m., and we're moving till 10 p.m. soon. And s Saturdays and Sundays, we're open uh, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. When you hire people with a ton of dental experience that have worked in old school dental offices, they're not working those hours. They fight you on them. They actually were trying to convince me that patients don't want to come in after work because they want to go home and eat dinner. They, were, they would complain about working the weekends. They would, it was just every possible scenario that they were fighting me and on. This is typical, after, after you go through the interview process and you tell them, 
they know that we're open seven days a week, they know what hours are, and they're like, you know, game on. They're all, they're all they in. They say it at first that they will, and then the minute then they, they get till, in they there. They wait till their three months is up. Oh, I can't work this, I can't, yeah. I have no childcare anymore now. Sorry, my babysitter just quit now. I can't work evenings anymore. And it was just constant things that I, I, I was just so, I was so fed up that I thought, okay, you know what? I gotta go back to what I was told because it's not a failed system so far with Chris Ad. See, listen to John. S yes, listen That's to John. Message. So I kind of revamped the whole staff and I literally posted an ad for administrators and all that and it literally says, dental experience is not needed. And I got a whole bunch of applicants from the service industry because obviously people, most people that are in the service industry don't want to stay in the service industry forever. But they don't have an entry way to get into like a, a corporate job where they can actually you know, feel like proud and stuff of where they're, where they're working. So I hired a whole bunch of people. So I'm just gonna just go through a couple of these pictures. Sarah, the top corner there, she worked at Subway. Sarah worked every single evening, every single weekend. Um, she was always smiling. Subway, I don't know, do you guys have Subway here? Is that, okay. Subway is a very fast paced, it's very, um, very busy kind of uh, environment. Sarah, I brought Sarah in. We brought her in as an entry level position, as a hygiene coordinator. So all she was doing all day was picking up the phone and calling people to get them back in for hygiene. And um, so we trained her, and within six months, we promoted Sarah to the front desk, you know, doing insurance, billing people, doing all that stuff, because she was just amazing. Love her, she's like so Ex amazing on the ecstatic. phone. She's ecstatic. Ecstatic. Loves her job, loves yeah. the culture. And then Doesn't we, have to wear that green shirt and cap anymore. Yep. Yeah. And she's then super happy. Within the last six months after that, she is now the treatment coordinator for one of our senior dentists. With That's no in dental less experience. Than a year, with no dental experience. And her husband literally came in, I don't want to get so upset, and he thanked me for giving his wife an opportunity to, um, to get her out of that service industry everything. and to have a long-term yeah. career with us. Yeah. Um, Nova at the bottom there, the redhead, she also, she's a bartender. She works until three in the morning every day. So when I told Nova she had to work until nine, that was a blessing to her. She's like, amazing, I can go out after work. Because yeah. she was already used to working until 2 a.m. Nova started out where Sarah's job. She was our hygiene coordinator. She is now, Nova is the same thing. She's been so amazing, so grateful. She is now, we're training her now to move over to the front desk. Same thing with our clinical staff. We do pretty much the same thing. We hire new grads. I literally post ads for hygiene and dental assistance right in the school. And I get them right out of school when they have had no old school habits from, lit, from being in another dental office. Even with dentists, we hire a lot of new associates and they train with our senior dentists. Um, and then the, the best thing that we, that we have gotten from this, which I didn't even expect when I did this, was loyalty from the opportunity that we gave them. Our, such a great saying, loyalty through opportunity. Yeah, I didn't even expect that. That was kind of like a domino effect that I didn't even know was gonna happen. Our staff are so loyal because we've given them an opportunity that most places would never have given them. Their, their families are loyal to us, they're like everybody, and that's, that goes on precedent with any, anything it seems else that we so, do. It seems so logical. Like, who do you want talking to your patients? A, a clinical person, somebody that talks clinically and very sterile, or somebody that has been in the service industry that's used to dealing with adversity and confrontation, you know, unhappy customers at the restaurant. These people know how to, how to talk to people. Yeah. They know how to be human. They know how to schmooze. Yeah, well, I mean, working in a bar until three in the morning, I'm pretty yeah. sure you're good at conflict resolution. And the, so. other, the other benefit is yeah. uh, the, uh, the entry level wages are a lot that's lower. That's thing. You can hire someone with an entry-level position, like wage, wages are low, and not because we don't want to pay people high wages, but it gives us so much room to give yeah. people raises like right away. Like I, I've given these girls four raises in the quick. last year because of it, because we started them so, like, so low, right? Yep. So with having said that we hire people with no experience, Obviously, you have to have a very solid onboarding system ready for when you bring these people in. So we have come up with, like, a, I feel pretty confident it is like a solid program, proven, proven to work. Um, we have, a, those are our manuals there. We have a manual for like literally every single position. They're pretty thick and we go through that. So when someone gets hired with no dental, like an administrative, 
for the first two days of their training, literally, they're actually in a classroom. You can see the picture down there. And they're, we're actually teaching them like a crash course on dental administration, like tooth numbers. And we're teaching them the different kind of appointment types. And we're doing all, we're, we're teaching them the basics so that they can move on to the next step two of their weeks. training. Generally two weeks, So it's right? two weeks, yeah. So the first and two days is those, um, it's the verbiage. I, I'm, I'm sure a lot of you are or were, like I was before, it's, it's so upsetting when you, when you hire new people and you commit to training them. It's like, okay, I gotta hire three new hygienists. I'm gonna, I'm gonna train, them, train them properly, spend time that's like two or three weeks of training. And you do that for a couple of cycles and then they, they end up leaving or quitting. And it's very disheartening because you've invested all of that, you know, lost production and, and the training time and all this stuff. And so then you just give up and say, okay, screw it. I'm just gonna throw them with, in, in, in with the tigers or whatever, throw them in the cage. Yeah. And then they, and you wonder why it fails. You know, you have unhappy patients because they don't know your system and your culture, well, how to, how to talk to your patients, how to, how to bill, how to, how to yeah. uh, deal with new patients. Yeah, but we you never need to take the time. Deals. It's the best investment you'll ever make. And what made me feel better about it is we're spending this time now, we're fully committed to onboarding. We develop all these onboarding systems and protocols. Um, what made me feel better about it is instead of hiring one person, like if we need one admin now, we hire three. And if one of them, one or two of them works out amazing, it's, it's awesome. Mm -hmm. Versus doing one at a time, putting them through this training protocol, it lowers your training costs. Yeah. And plus it gives you options. And it also creates that little bit of you know, competition, okay. which is good sometimes. Yeah, so for the first couple of days, like I said, we started for the basics. We actually have somebody come in to train them on that because we're just too busy to do that part ourselves. They're actually here somewhere, it's talking teeth. <laughs> um, and we start out with that first, Shut and up. then they move on to training with one of our senior staff. And it's a whole two-week program that they do. We don't, put a, we don't put anybody in front of a patient until they've went through the, the onboarding, whether they're clinical or they're administrative. Our clinical staff, have been taught Carissa phone scripts and how to answer the phones and how to pass a secret chopper call. You have to have, um, it has to be transparent to the whole office why you do things the way you do them. Everyone has to understand and respect each and individual pe person's position in the office and why every single position is fundamentally important for the success. So we literally put everyone through the exact same training until they branch off into their own individual training. So we start out right away with the first week is Chris had phone scripts, how to pass a secret shopper call. Um, we teach them why we double chair hygiene and why we're always opening hygiene time. Teach them about prime time hours and the availability. We teach them our core values and what each of them stand for and then we test them and then after that we move on to our second phase of training which is more of like the actual hands-on training with their actual duties. The first week is us embedding and instowing into them what we believe in and our philosophy of business. So we'll show you here just a quick little, um, this is like a, a couple days with it, would be a couple days in at this point when they're learning the Chris ad. And also, it's good, it's good to note that, that these two also are not dental. Yeah, so, um, so what we were doing, so in this picture here, you'll see Anna, she's, uh, she's our senior staff, that's when they would move on to a staff member. Anna actually came to us as well with zero training. Anna now literally runs our AR department. She is literally beyond amazing at her job. She's like a fundamental key component to our whole company. Um, she, and she had no dental experience when she started with us. She's training Taylor in here. Um, as a, to be a hygiene coordinator. And on Taylor's, one of her first days here, she literally sat looking at the Chris Ad website, watching all the training videos that they provide to you about how, like, why you answer the phones you, what, the way you do, how you pass a secret shopper call, um, the, how you book things, why we open things up, why we're always adding more hygiene. And then we'll quiz them so that we can make sure that they will pass a secret shopper call and that they will be successful when they do move on to answer the phone. Yeah, the, so with, with the, um, our customer experience, which is one of our uh, core values, uh, when we first started, it, it took a little while and it wasn't really gaining much traction because I, I was just kind of assuming that certain things were happening with the experience of our, our patients coming in. So the workshop we did that Sherry referenced earlier, we, we sat down, we've had three full days of this since we opened, one before we opened, and then we've had two since. 
where our whole team gets together in a, in a, a boardroom, and um, we did a customer journey map. So we thought about every single touch point from when the, 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 the patient first calls the office until they walk out the door and, and pay and book their next appointment. So we went through every single step from the phone call, and we, we kind of systematized it, and we put it into a checklist. And the checklist is mandatory. Every single patient customer that walks into our office has to have a checklist. And everything that is the most important things are in there, like how the patient is greeted with a smile, um, the internal camera photos are taken every single time. Every single patient that's in a chair, no matter what they're there for, has to have 10 internal camera photos. It's, it's the most powerful thing. Even if they're in an emergency and they're coming in for a single tooth, we're taking full intraoral photos for them because you're not just talking about that one tooth like Justin said. You need to engage them while they're in your chair. So we're showing them what else is going on in their mouth while they're there for that one appointment for that one tooth. So um, it's mandatory, it's an actual office policy that you take an int 10 intraoral photos for all new patients and those intraoral photos get updated at least once a year. Yeah, I'm telling you, like, from, from our experience, if you don't systematize it with a, some sort of a checklist, this is working great for us. It doesn't matter how you do it, but there's no way that, it, we, we want the patient at the end of the day at eight o'clock or nine o'clock at night to have the exact same experience as when you're like bright-eyed and bushy-tailed first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. Like when you're tired and whatever and kind of grumpy at the end of the day, we want the patient to have the exact same experience. So in this checklist, everything has been very well thought out. Yeah, so the checklist, like I said, it's not just clinical things, it's like soft, like personal things. Like did you read the journal notes about what they've shared with you about their family? Um, what are they coming in for today? How much uh, is their insurance? How much do they have left on their insurance? What's their copay going to be so that there's no surprises? You tell them their copay before you even start treatment. So there's no surprises at the front desk. Um, are we waiting for any pre-Ds from the insurance companies? Are we waiting for a lab case? These, so when the, when the clinical staff come in in the morning, the hygienists grab the pink ones and the dental assistants grab the blue ones for however many patients are in their column. And they're going through their day and they're prepared before their day even starts. They're, they're looking for anything so that we can ensure when that patient comes in, we're ready for them, we look like we're ready for them, we, we're expecting them, and there's not going to be any misunderstandings or miscommunication. These, these, um, it serves as an accountability for us to make sure we're doing everything that we're supposed to be doing for that patient. Um, another thing on the back of these cards is where the dentist or the hygienist will write down what they did today. Even though they put their codes in, we still want to make sure we can cross-reference at the front desk that everything is right. So they write down what they did today, what the next appointment needs to be that needs to be booked, how much time the dentist will need, and, next. Their, and next. their perio cycle and making Justin. sure that. Yes. And there, it's a policy in our office. You, every patient must leave with two appointments, no matter what. One with the dentist, one in hygiene. When patients get to the front desk... Even if they donate any work. Yeah. When Jokes. patients don't... Well, unless they don't have any work. But in our, I don't know about your community, but in our community, everyone has work to be done. Um, when patients come to the front desk, if you can't get that person to book with the dentist at the front desk, it's our policy for our staff to bring that patient into that consult room because most of the times patients will say, I need to check my schedule. I, I don't know right now. I need to check. That's not, that's not true always. Patients sometimes, if they're not booking treatment with the dentist, especially if they're insured patients and they have insurance, why aren't they booking? It's probably a couple other reasons that they don't want to tell you at the front desk. Maybe they didn't understand the treatment that was, that, that was diagnosed. Patients don't want to ask dentists questions. They feel they, they're, it's, it's, it's white coat syndrome. They're, or maybe they don't understand the financial commitment that needs to come out of their pocket. Or maybe they need a payment plan, but they're afraid to ask for one. So we, if we have trained our staff to teach them rebuttals. So we have educated and coached our staff on how to handle the common um, arguments that a patient will say. And, and we which they're almost always... Yeah. They didn't understand the, the, the finances, what their financial obligation is, how much their copay is. They didn't understand the treatment, or they didn't trust or the believe the dentist. Yeah. So we spent a lot of time, 
uh, talking to our dentists about believability and you know, creating a sense of urgency, using real human words to explain things. And we built into the checklist about financial, the, the financial agreement has to be done for every single patient. And I'm, I, financial agreement also the treatment agreement so that they understand what's being done today and they will understand what's being done at the next appointment. And that, again, that's all built into our checklist. Yeah. Since we started implementing this about six months after we opened, um, we get the most, we have surveys when patients leave the office that you guys probably have the, your own system for this, but every patient that leaves their office gets a text message with a survey, super easy. It takes like 20 seconds. It's just rating from zero to five on five questions. And since we implemented this, we get 100% on pretty much every survey. Yeah. Because we, we, we used to have problems with the, the, didn't understand finances, typical trust things yeah, that Chris it wasn't had about. Uh, my finances weren't discussed properly with me. But this or, is amazing now. Or like I didn't understand the treatment. Service. So that's why we have trained our staff. If, you, if someone does not book at the front desk an appointment for their treatment, take them into the consult room where it's private and in a very respectable manner, find out why they're not booking. And I guarantee you 90% it's not because of their schedule. Because even if it's a scheduling issue, what I, tell my pa what I tell my staff, just literally don't ask them. Just say, I'm going to just book it a couple weeks out on, um, on a Saturday afternoon. We're going to call you to remind you. And if it doesn't work, we'll just rebook it again. Don't worry, Dr. Abed won't mind. So we, we literally basically give them no reason not to be able to. And like I said, and sometimes if they're not insured, they just want a payment plan and they want to know what they can do to get this work done, but they're afraid to ask because they're embarrassed maybe. So anyways, when we've done these checklists, like Steve said, it's increased our retention to the, like the 80% that it's at right now. So it's, it's been amazing. So another one of the key component positions in our office that we actually have just implemented in the last couple months. Yeah, like two, four or five months. months. I used to work in the service industry myself. I've been a bartender for a few years. And Bartenders are the best. Yeah. And um, one of the, I don't know if you guys know like a concierge or a pointer in like a very busy, um, fancy restaurant. It's the person that's kind of standing, telling the person where to come and bring the plate and stuff like that. They're basically the eye in the sky. So we have a concierge. It's an administrative position. And it's one person that's dedicated to literally walking around the office and making sure the flow is going the way it needs to go. They're, they're making sure that the appointments are being started on time. Sometimes, you know, a hygienist might just need help turning the room over. So these staff have been trained to, use, to do sterile bay. It's an administrator that's been trained for sterile bay, trained to clean the ops. They're making sure that they're reminding the dentist, like, you know, you're running behind, like, we need to keep moving. Our time management has become so amazing since we started the concierge. Also, another thing that we do for the, with the concierge, she's also in the waiting room, you know, interacting with the patients, asking them do they want a coffee, um, asking the kids if they want a cartoon station put on. Also, she, if she's in the wait, she can see in the waiting room, if that person has somebody in the waiting room waiting for them for treatment, and if there's a hygienist that has nothing to do, she's going in the waiting room and asking that person, hey, would you like to come back and get a free cleaning? while you wait, it's literally in-house marketing. If you have a hygienist with nothing to do, why not grab someone that's not yet your patient and just put them into hygiene? They love that. You're paying and them anyway. they keep coming back. Um, so again, they're paying attention to, the, uh, to their guests, engaging in conversation with them. It's also great too when that, in, when that concierge is walking in the clinical area, a dentist can just grab and wave a hand and say, hey, I need a consult, I need a treatment coordinator to come in and talk to my patient about financing, or hey, I need a hand, can you go and see, call the insurance and find out if they have implant coverage. It's that, it's that communication between the front and the back that keeps us all combined and we're all like on the same page. Yeah, they, and our concierges, uh, they love their job. They love it. You really like you're, yeah, you're they're helping so proud. people, you're pleasing people. And also a side benefit is that they, were, they were just telling me last week, uh, to, it's two of our main team that are concierges. They do like 12 to 15,000 steps a day on their Fitbits. Oh yeah, they love it. I, I should be charging a gym membership. Yeah, and you know what? We, we let them all take I turns. That blew me away though, because yeah. they're, they're walking like all the time. We uh, let the admins take turns on being the concierge, and you know, a lot of your administrators will love the fact that they can get up out of a chair and actually get to be, for the day, get to be the walking around and like interacting and going to the back and doing sterilization and all that. They love it. It really, it changes it up for them and they fight over that position. 
Um, oh, sorry. Next slide. Another thing that we had to implement in the last, I think. Another non-dental person. Yeah. Another thing we had to, we had to implement this because we were becoming so crazily busy was we have a full-time non-dental um, position of, this is Linda, lovely Linda. She's actually just came out of retirement. It's a part-time job for her. She loves it. Um, we, sh sh we have someone fully committed to calling and verifying insurance all day long. So the minute a patient walks in and they pass in that insurance card and we add it to the system, she's on the phone in the back calling that insurance company, even if the policy already exists in our system, but there's different tiers. I don't know about you guys, but there's different tiers. You know, we could work in the same company, but I might have 80% and you have 100. So you need to have somebody that is constantly verifying that what we have is accurate information. We take 100% responsibility for patient's insurance. We bill directly to insurance. So we can't tell that patient something and then it was wrong and then send them a bill 20, 20 days later. You're gonna get people really mad. So we have someone that's calling the minute they walk in and making sure that we have the correct information. This allows huge support for the AR, for our AR girls, our accounts receivable girls, because so, it's, it's helping them as well. Um, it also, it helps us maximize patients' insurance. If we know what their insurance is, we can maximize and we can, we know that we can uh, approach treatment the way that we want to. It also takes ownership off the patients. Like I said, most people don't understand insurance at all unless you work in dental, you probably don't understand your dental coverage. So we don't expect them to know, we let them know that we're letting, we're gonna let you know what you have. Yes? Yeah. So in our office, actually, we cross-train everybody. So our clinical staff understand insurance. They understand copay. They under so like, again, with our two-week onboarding, everyone is trained on insurance, on breakdowns, on um, treatment plan, on predeterminations. Everyone in the whole office can talk about insurance, can talk about treatment, and can talk about what people's co-pays would be, their percentages. We just needed someone to be dedicated to it, to be verifying the insurances because of our volume that we're so busy. But everyone can. So our clinical staff, like our checklist, those, when they do their audit cards in the morning, that's a clinical staff member. She's going into their insurance information and she is calculating what their co-pay is gonna be so that she can tell that patient before they start treatment, you know, um, hi Bob, when you leave today, after you get your two fillings done, it'll be $30 out of your pocket for your copay. That's amazing, you have amazing insurance. Yeah. So they all know Linda, how to talk this about insurance. was such a great investment. Yeah. It's, it's another one that we were getting um, uh, under our surveys and some of our Google reviews from when we first opened like two and a half years ago. Complaints about they went over my insurance that they didn't know. But since we've had this position, Zero, 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 yeah. I mean zero. Because you can't expect your, your clinical staff, um, I used to expect it, but I, I, I don't think it's realistic anymore. Your clinical staff, like your, your assistants and hygienists or front desk staff, to take the time to go through each patient's insurance in detail, like you know, to the penny, how much their copay is gonna be, how much they have left in their max. Mm -hmm. Are they eligible for another like recall? Mm -hmm. Are they over? So since we have this position, we have all that information, super, super detailed, and it's right in the system every time. Yeah, so and there's no guesswork. We ha we ha it takes relief off the front desk too. We're, they're not, they're, you know, the front desk girl that after they check them in isn't about to call the insurance company and sit on hold for 20 minutes to get the breakdown. So it's not done at the front desk. Your front desk team needs to be 100% focused on the patients that are in front of them. So we have our back support admin, and then we have our front desk admin. Um, it also gives confidence for the dentist to know what's in the computer is accurate and I'm going to go ahead and do this and know that this patient has this coverage, what I'm telling them is accurate, and they can go ahead and do same day treatment or do major treatment or whatever it is. We always maximize people's insurances and um, we never wanna go over the max, so that's why it's really important to have this position in our office. Yeah, so, so quickly, because we, we spent so much time on this today, and every uh, No Limits, but giving the people what they want, you have to, have to, you have to live by this. This is very, it's very difficult to actually follow this, and to, to be honest, we don't 100%, we try to. It's, it, we found it difficult to get our associates to focus on just doing the recalls, and you, I think a lot of you dentists out there see, see the same thing with your associates. 
because they want to be working, whatever. But we stack up all of our hygiene appointments before, before and after work. Like after four o'clock, we usually have five or six hygienists going. Mm -hmm. um, but you have to give the people what they want, and you have to live by it. I was, I was, I pride our office in getting the highest number of perfect secret shopper calls, or right up there, anyways. They give us tons of them. We get, the, is it up there? The top or right up there? We want to be the top. <laughs> no, so anyways, I, I was a little put off, because I always, I always argue with them if they don't give me perfect. I'm like, what do you mean? I listen to the call and whatever. It sounded, it sounded good to me. But last, last week we had one, and one of our receptionists, one of the three 24-hour prime times she gave was 4.30 in the afternoon. And then the, 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 the reviewer, whoever this, this dude is that Chris had that does it, that rates, rates you, um, said, no, prime time starts after 5.30, right? Is it you, Corey? Prime time starts after 5.30. I'm like, well, I was, I was kind of like, what are you talking about? 4.30 is close enough, but you have to be vigilant about it. It's not prime time. Yeah. You have to be vigilant. You, like I said about the consumer, um, the consumer slide, your most important product that you have in your office is your availability. That is your product. If you're open seven days a week until nine o'clock at night, that is the product that you're delivering, is your availability. So you need to make sure that that message gets across to every single patient in the office. They need a monthly reminder that you're open seven days a week until nine o'clock at night. Like, patients really don't believe that you really are open seven days a week until nine. A lot of offices say they're open until nine, by appointment only, and only if we need to. Like, yeah. there's a lot of hidden things, so patients don't trust that. If you're opening your office seven days a week until nine o'clock at night, you need to make sure it's the first thing that your patient knows and hears when they pick up the phone and call you. So Open that's seven days a week. Because people, people are a little bit jaded because they've seen all these, these dental offices that say they're open on Saturday. Yeah. And then they find out it's only if they book like a, a $50,000 implant case on a Saturday. They'll go in for it, maybe. Yeah, only if we can make. But you need to let people know every single phone call. We answer the phone open seven days a week, seven days a week, seven days a week. Yeah. <clears throat> So again, another one of the marketing things that we do is we use radio, and this is just to show, like reiterate, the, our most important message when we advertise and market is that we're open seven days a week. So, so some people hearing Taunton Village Dental as Oshawa's seven days a week dentist still have trouble believing that seven days a week includes Saturdays and Sundays. Well, it does. Any day of the week, every day of the week, no appointment necessary. Same day treatment guaranteed. Nobody turned away at Taunton Village Dental. Real early, 7 a.m. till real late, 9 p.m. Monday to Friday. And real convenient, 8 to 5, Saturday and Sunday. Taunton Village Dental. Oshawa's seven days a week dentists. We live in an area, like in greater Toronto area. In an area, there's like 700,000 people. And when I, for, I've been doing radio advertising for years because I've always been say. in remote areas where they have small stations and a good reach. Um, but Sherry and her girlfriend convinced me that this country music station was like the rage in Oshawa. It is. I've never listened to a country song in my life. I didn't believe her. So, so I trusted her and it, it, it's amazing. Like, the yeah. listenership, everybody, all of these patients like listen to this radio station. So I love country music, but it wasn't because I like country music, but I knew like the demographic of the city that our office is in, and it is country music. And um, it actually was proven that it is the number one radio station in our area, so that's why we market on, on there. Even though Steve's never heard our commercials on the radio because he doesn't listen to country. <laughs> Oops, I, sorry, I skipped one, I have to go back. This one, I have to go back, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we don't have to talk about this. This is the, the slide that we've yeah. been talking about. But you really got to pay attention to this. Those top things, they have nothing to do with dentistry, really. It's trust. It's honesty. Yeah, patients don't know if they had a good root canal or if they had a good filling. They know that the staff were friendly. You got them in right away. You, um, you build their insurance. You told them that you had full transparency with fees with them. There were no um, uh, bait and switch kind of things when they came into the office. The office was clean. They trusted the staff. That's all they care about. They don't know if their filling looks good in the mirror. They have no idea. As long as the bite is good, then that's all they care about. So just to show you that that report that John sent out is accurate, these are some of the things that we pulled from our surveys that we, um, the surveys that we send out that will reiterate <coughs> those things being the most important things that people are looking for. So I just wanna, we just pulled out a couple of them that kind of just um, stand with that. From what I've had, from uh, from what I had my first, ex from what I had my first experience, I would have nothing to. S there is nothing they could have done better to make 
any, sorry, I'm like stumbling over my words, <laughs> to make it any better than it was. Everyone was always pleasant. I always appreciate how easily and willing they are to work around mine and my son's busy work schedule. Friendly, informative, and responsive staff. Clean environment, positive atmosphere. Loved how kind the dentists and hygienists were, knowing my, dent my daughter was nervous. Came here a year ago, as we had a bad experience somewhere else. Could not believe the difference. This place is, is amazing. I only came in to change my dentist and possibly make an appointment, but they took me in right then and there, which we always do. If we have a walk-in, it's our policy, you treat that patient right now. There is no go and come back. They, even if we can't get them in right away, we'll just say, oh, let's, let's put you in for a cleaning while you wait to see the dentist, even if they're in pain. You know what, you probably need a cleaning before you can see the dentist anyway, so we're just gonna put you in hygiene. You're not lying to them. If they need an extraction, they probably should get a cleaning first. Um, I came in as an emergency. You took me right in. Service was fantastic. I will be leaving my current dentist based on this experience. And this is one of my best favorite ones that we pulled. Everyone seemed truly happy to be working there. And that to me was like, and, and by the way, share. these are legit. We didn't pick, just pick the no, only eight good ones. Swear to God, and the thousand like crappy ones. We pick those. We get out. these all the time. They're all like this. Yep. We usually get uh, in a day. We usually get about five or six of our patients that leave. We'll do this survey after they leave on the phone. It's not, not every single one, but we get five or six a day. So it's a pretty good barometer of you know what's happening in their heads. Yeah. This I won't spend too much time on this. Uh, one of the huge things in our office is the $99 cleaning for non-insured patients. And one of the, it is one of the things we fully committed to from the beginning. They were going to offer it all the time. No bait and switch because people hate that. You, know, you bait them in with a, a $99 cleaning. You try and upsell them and give them like a, a $250 x-ray and exam and all kinds of perio and all kinds of other stuff that you know, they're not going to be interested in. These, these are people that don't have insurance. And they're super grateful. For us, it's like a $250 value, this appointment. Because in Toronto, you have to do pretty much a full exam. You have to do a, a full odontogram for $99. This is what we provide for these patients. For a full odontogram, full perioprobing, uh, head and neck exam, all the charting. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a lot of work. Intraoral photos. And we give them two x-rays and uh, a quick dental exam. Basically, it's like a recall exam. The dentist goes in and bonds with them. Um, but th this has been a huge thing for office. About 20% of all of our filled hygiene appointments are returning $99 uh, patients, mm -hmm. which is, we booked them at 30 minutes. And obviously, like, we don't make money from the $99 cleaning. That's not why we have it. We were tapping, we get, by offering this, um, this special uh, rate of cleaning, you're tapping into a market that a lot of dentists don't tap into, the non-insured. So there's a lot of non-insured people out there. And I think it's like 20%. Yeah, and so. with us offering this cleaning, it gets them in the door. And then once they're in, you know, like we do the same thing. Just give them their intro photos, let them know what's going on in their mouth. And then we put them on a payment plan to do those, to do those dental treatments. Yeah, and lots we, of them get dental work. I'd yeah, say like 50% get more work. More than 50% of our $99 patients are actually getting treatment done and paying out of their pocket. So you're tapping into a market that normally does not, you know, most patients that come in with a $99, they're like, wow, I never thought I could get a cleaning done. I haven't come because I just thought it was going to be way too expensive. And we treat these all the same. We treat our $99 patients the exact same as full insurance and our billionaire patients. 100%. Like from start, start to finish. You guys chose a question. Um, I'll, I'll, like I said, we, we take emergencies right up until like 8.30 like at, at night. Uh, most, of our, most of our staff, like one or two will stay behind with the dentist. And then after, on another day when it happens, they just rotate. So it's not always the same person. Just, and with our staff as well, another thing I have to, to let you guys know, we, we have, no matter how long anyone's been working in our office, everyone is committed to working one weekend a month and at least one to two evenings a week. Even if you, even, even me, I work my one weekend a month and I work my one evening a week. Because 
you have to do your part, right? So when you have that constant rotation that no one's always doing the evening shift and no one's always doing the weekends, that one person doesn't mind being the one that stays behind for the emergency because it's not gonna be them next time. You have to respect your employees and I would never ask any of my staff to do anything that I wouldn't do myself. So I do the exact same things that they do. So we don't have those problems with getting people to stay. Yeah? No, uh, we've kind of, so we have this, like we have these shifts, like we have a morning, a midday, and an evening shift. So if I do an evening shift until nine, I'll do a midday shift tomorrow. So I don't have to start at seven, I start at 10. So we make sure it's kind of a rotation of the three shifts. So no one's ever like back, piggybacking a 9 p.m. to a 7 a.m. So they we still get it. to. We tried it. We tried to it, do it, the 12-hour shifts. It was too exhausting. A 12-hour yeah. day when you're, um, you know, you're in clinical or you're walking, you're doing. It was too long, and like you're not delivering quality care to your patients when you're doing a 12-hour day. So we don't do that anymore. We have those three shifts and we rotate them. Uh, no, it's just like we have a, like we have an overlap of, of staff that come in. So we'll have two people open the office at 7 a.m. till 3, but we'll have a 10 to 6 midday girl come in around 10 till 6, and then we have our evening girls come in from 1 to 9. So we have, so it's never, you're never stuck doing the evenings and you don't come back first thing in the morning. So we all rotate like that so that it's very like fair. And then the weekends, if you work your weekend, it's a rotation. So you only end up working one week in a month. If you book your schedule like really properly and always remember not to favor people and that everybody has to commit to the evenings and weekend policy, don't even hire them. In an interview process, if I ever hear even a <gasps> about the hours, okay, just go on your way. Like I don't even continue the interview. It's time to get rid even of on the phone, if I don't, if I hear any kind of hesitation when I tell them our hours, I don't even, I don't even finish the phone call. I'm just like, you know what? I'm going to give you a call back later. If, if it's a, if it's a sigh now, in three months, it's going to be, I'm sick or my kid's sick or I have no babysitter. Yeah. So don't even entertain it if they show you any kind of problem with your hours. Okay, so is it just finish up with the ninety-nine dollar thing. Sorry, it is huge, <laughs> not insured. Um, all of these people. Not only do they return, they all have friends and family that have insurance yes. or they can benefit from 99 cleaning and they have coworkers and friends that have insurance. So giving them the same experience, they, they go and tell everybody how great our office is. Yep. They send their friends, they send their family. And a lot of these non-insured patients at some point get insurance. And you, or they have an emergency, they need an endo, you want to be their dentist. $99 teeth cleaning at Totten Village Dental is not a one-time offer, not a limited time offer. It's an anytime, all the time offer. It includes dentist exam, cleaning, polish, and x-rays, preventive dentistry, which means fewer dentist visits over time, all included, just $99. No insurance, no problem. And at Taunton Village Dental, you never need an appointment. Walk-ins welcome. Same-day treatment guaranteed. Oshawa's seven days a week dentist. So this is another marketing. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we have done, we have, we have put people, we have entertained to do the in-house dental plan as well. But like I said, with the $99 cleaning, you're bringing in those people that need that in-house dental plan, and we just put them on a payment plan to do their treatment. So it is like that. That's that's our that's our way to get them in. Is the $99 cleaning? Once they come in, we we you know we let them know what needs to be done. And then we started out slow. Like I said, don't, don't over-diagnose either. Don't tell them everything. Start with just one or two fillings. Let them know, you know what, we can, we can put you on a payment plan for this. We'll give you a 10% discount. You know, we can split it up into two payments. And then you start them off with that. When they come back for their next $99 cleaning, which is in three to four months, because we put them on a perio cycle for sure, um, then you offer the next two fillings that are going on. So it is kind of like an in-house financing that we do once they come in through this through this kind of offer. Okay, phone scripts, just follow Chris said, do whatever they say. So, but we like have- vigilantly. Yeah, but we have really important specific phone scripts that we never um, leave from without Chris, we only follow what Chris had tells us. So we have a reactivation phone script that our recall, hygiene recall co coordinator does. We also have a full-time treatment coordinator that's making phone calls to fill the doctor's schedule as well. It's really important that you follow the phone scripts that Chris had is giving you, and we don't just 
uh, pick up the phone. If we don't get them by phone, we try them by email and you try them by text. Don't keep calling the same person at 2 o'clock in the afternoon on the telephone. Call them next time at 9 or email them or text them. So you always have to be changing it up, but staying within, getting them in right away, creating that sense of urgency that they need to get this work done by the dentist or letting them know for their hygiene, like you're genuinely concerned about their oral health and that they need to come in for their cleaning and getting them in within prime time hours. Secret Shopper calls get perfect every time. Thank you for calling Taunton Village Dental open seven days a week. Anna speaking, how can I help you? Hi, Anna, I was hoping to schedule an appointment to have my teeth That's cleaned. That's Nicole's father, by the way. Any availability for tomorrow? Uh, yes, absolutely. Thank you so much for choosing our office. Have we ever mm -hmm. seen you here before? No, it's my first time. Your first time? Okay. Uh, well, we do have some great hours. We are open seven days a week uh, until 9 p.m. during the weekdays and every Saturday and Sunday, 8 to 5. And I know you mentioned tomorrow, but if you did have time, we can see you this evening. Um, oh, nice. Uh, 5.50 or 6 p.m. Uh, with Krista. She's fantastic. You'd love her. And if that doesn't work, we can certainly see you tomorrow, even in the morning. Uh, Krista is in again. Uh, we could do a 7.30 or 8 a.m. Mm -hmm. Would Let's any of those see. times work? Yeah, I'm actually not too far from you guys. I just work at, like, the Home Depot. It's, like, right by you guys. Oh, okay. So, yeah, I'm not too far. Um, Perfect. Let's see. I'm going to see if I can maybe have, like, somebody in the register department. I work in Department 90. That's like the register. Um, can I have your name again? I can give you a call back. Yeah, for sure. My name is Anna. Mm -hmm. And Anna, quick question. Do you guys take uh, Sun Life? Uh, yeah, for sure. We take all insurances. Cool. And with that kind of stuff, do you guys like build them directly or does it go to me? Yeah, you got it. We build directly. Oh, it'd be, you'd be billing them directly. Okay, cool. I just want to make sure that I have that noted. Perfect, Anna. So what I'm going to double check with my supervisor and see if I'm a, if I can either leave early today or come in a little bit later tomorrow. Uh, you said, okay. what time can I give you a call back? What's the latest I can give you a call back? Oh, uh, we are in the office this evening until 9 p.m. Cool. Thank you so much. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, for Talk sure. We look forward to hearing back from you. Thanks. Thanks. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. So you got it perfect every time. Be promotional. Do all the things that, that Chris had tells you to. Being promotional and setting up like a, a, a preconceived expectation. You're gonna love it here. You're gonna, you're gonna love Krista, our hygienist. She's, she's amazing, she's so gentle. You're gonna love Dr. Dr. Jones. He's so gentle, he's so great with kids. Pre-appointment, you so. all know about this. Um, so with, with your hygiene coordinator, Pre, go ahead, you go ahead on this one. Pre yeah, so pre-appointing, like I said, in our office it's a policy. Everybody has to leave with two appointments, one hygiene and one with the dentist. Pre-appointing is so, so important, and it should be done at the front desk because, um, you know, clinical staff, hygienists, they could try to dictate their schedule and not put them in prime time, so we always just allow the front desk to pre-appoint. So when you... you um, it's a very important uh, position that you have to make sure everyone is pre-appointing. Plus, reactivation. No matter how on the ball you are about pre-appointing, you're still gonna have people that no-show or cancel. So you have to have somebody reactivating these patients. So like I said, we have a full-time hygiene coordinator that is literally, the entire shift is calling to reactivate appointments that people have canceled or no-showed to. We also have a treatment coordinator that's on the phone all day long reactivating dental appointments when they've missed or canceled their appointment with the dentist. This is happening all day long. We're getting out over 100 calls a day in hygiene and about 50 calls a day in dental. And then their sole purpose is to fill the dentist schedule. Um, every Monday we run a report, actually. Um, that's the first thing that they, the first um, calls that they make on Monday morning is the people that no-showed or canceled the week before. We call them first because they're still engaged. They remember that they missed their appointment. Those are the ones that you'll have the easiest to book back again for. Um, other than that, they go to their list and it's constant calls or emails or text messages. We actually, um, we are, this role, this hygiene coordinator role, which is an entry level position where you can hire someone with no experience to do and pay them not like extremely high wage, they make about 80 to 100 calls per day and their book back rate of what they book with those 80 to 100 is about 15 on average. So 15, uh, 15 uh, patients get booked out of their 100 to 80 calls a day. So our dentists, when they go in to do an exam to, uh, diagnosis, they average, they diagnose about $650 in treatment during their, their exam. 
if you times 650 times those 15 calls that were booked solely just by calling to book back reactivation, that's like that's $9,750 in daily revenue that literally came from an entry level position where you're paying somebody almost not minimum wage, but you're paying them and it didn't take an experience to even get that position to happen in the office. So that's a really important um, thing that you should definitely yeah, put into your so office. Don't be short sighted about hiring new people. Think about it, like this, a position like this, or if you miss one phone call, it, it costs you, you lost thousands of dollars in revenue. So hiring people is the best investment you can make. Like we have our room, our back office room. Yeah, we have we a back We usually have six to eight people working there at any given time. Yeah. But the phones, like they're just generating leads, they're generating um, yeah. revenue. Filling your schedule, they're keeping the, the dentist and the hygienist busy. And like I said, like Justin has said earlier, you spend so much money on marketing to get that person into your office. It could have taken three brochures or whatever it took for them to pick up the phone and finally come in. You cannot just let them go once they leave. You have to have somebody full time working to constantly be reactivating those patients so that you don't lose them and the money that you invested for them to come into your office in the first place. Reactivation is more important than new patients, really, because you've already spent that money on them. So make sure they keep coming back. So, um, so oh, this is okay. uh, Sherry. Pro kudos to Sherry for organizing these events and a, and a couple of other team. Um, I would never do things. It takes so much organization. Everybody, everybody has a good heart and wants to give back and help, but it's really great to have somebody on your team that will do the, the groundwork and organize it for you because it's, it's, it's such a great feeling. Hi, my name is Sherry. I'm the Director of Operations at Taunton Village Dental. We're here today at St. Vincent's Soup Kitchen. Um, it's really important to our office to give back to the community that's given so much to us. We want to be known in our community for volunteering, giving back, and good karma. So um, our whole team is here today taking their time out of their day with their families to give back to the Oshawa community. Okay, so this is our second year here at St. Vincent's Kitchen in uh, the Durham region. Um, basically, our team from Taunton Village Dental is volunteering for the day for the service. Uh, we've already given out six cleanings to six different individuals, so we look forward to seeing them in our office this coming week. So we just wanted to kind of just again remind you about the stuff that we do. Uh, it's not just about... Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it's not just about it's not just about the money rolling in either. We do want our community and our staff to know it's not just about the money, um, and they love these things. I actually have had people apply for positions in our office because of the community service work that we do. So those people definitely fit our culture when they're applying because of what we do. It is amazing. People do notice everything. They might not say anything, yeah. but people notice everything. I, we actually, me and Steve were in the office, the waiting room was full, and then we were talking about, we were talking about this event to ourselves. and two staff members, uh, two patients were in the chairs waiting to go in, and they spoke up and said, oh, we're coming here, we, we actually, are, we're now coming to your office because you guys do these things. We switch because of this. So, I mean, it's not, we don't do it for marketing, but... The word gets out, and that's the image that we want to be known for. So we were just saying our hashtag in our office is we love our patients. We've actually won, um, we have, we've, for two years in a row now, so two years of business, we have won best dental office in our region. Um, of of 750,000 people. Yep, and we have won it two years in a row, and we've only been in business for two years. So um, we definitely have high standards for ourselves and our expectations with our staff, and they feel really proud to be working in, in our clinic. Oh, so uh, SEO, super important, obviously, because people need to be able to find you. So Chris Ed does a great job of, of getting your ratings up and rankings up. Um, starting from scratch, it's very important to, I forget all the words, I'm not very techy. Um, I still have a Blackberry. But, but you, it, it's very important to populate the, um, get your organic ratings high so that by the time you open, you have a really high Google rating. So when people are looking for you, they recognize your logo and they know where to find you. So, yeah, find somebody to do that for you. 
Prime time availability, yeah, we have to keep, I know it looks really scary when you look at these schedules sometimes. Like, look at all that open time. There's like, there's like eight hours of open time in hygiene. The hygiene's on the right here. Um, but it's gonna fill, and it, like, we, I think this, in this particular case, we just added that last column so, on the right, right? Yeah, so this actually, this is a screenshot of our, our um, software. This is actually five days before this day. So I, this, I ended up, um, I added a column because we were at 60% of our filled hygiene. So that's why you see a schedule, columns there with nothing in it, was because I added them because we were already at 60% capacity. You all, if you're at 60% capacity and you can't get a patient in within 24 hours, you gotta open another column, you gotta hire another hygienist, you gotta get even a if the, in. Even if you don't have a hygienist booking, open up a hygiene chair yeah. and pretend you do. I, I, we haven't had much luck with Phyllis, like fill us, because the, our, our staff didn't really take it seriously, so they weren't using that column. But what we're doing lately is tricking them and putting in a, a hygiene column, like we have a legit hygienist working when we actually don't. Yep. And by the time, they, they, everything always works out. We get a temp or whatever. So this is actually something that we just got in our office in the last month. Um, because we actually now are at capacity, we really are. We're building an addition. We break ground in uh, the spring. We're adding five more ops. We're actually at capacity. We can't get someone in within 24 hours in prime, team, t prime time. Sometimes. So we couldn't allow that to happen. So we actually, until our addition is built, we have leased a mobile hygiene van and it's parked outside of our office and it serves as our eighth operatory. So that just goes to show you the commitment that we are to believing in this philosophy. And that cleared up a, a, a dental chair to do dental work. So we just so put all of our like, perio. That's going to add about $120,000 of revenue yeah. a month. Because we added this mobile van, we were able to hire one more full-time dentist. So it's not about what we it's not about what we make with the van. It's the fact that we can hire a full time dentist that will generate one hundred and fifty thousand dollars more in production in that month because we got the van. We hired a dentist. Okay, we got a cl closing out here. I love the line. Numbers don't lie. I mean, if you look at our numbers, they're pretty pretty solid. Um, the the best metric here that we look at is the number of filled hygiene. It's like four columns from left, and you can see it just steadily steadily growing. Um, this month, we'll do over a thousand. Yeah, it's so a important. A thousand field hygiene appointments. It's so important and vital to and the measure revenue is retention. Pretty sick too. You have to measure retention. You always have to know that your numbers are climbing. You have to know and so that you know that you're growing. So we actually send out projection goals of what we need to hit. So we look back six months before, seeing what our hygiene number was, and we have to make sure that we expect back. 80% of those at least, plus what we expect to bring in that month as well of our new patient. So if we don't hit those numbers, either A, we need to market more, or we've lost some of our patients. So we have to figure that out. But numbers don't lie. Again, this is about the, about the service. There's no competition. Once you get all your, your ducks in a row, and you start giving amazing customer service with those checkpoints, no competition. Nobody, the, no other dent, dentist You'll is going to be like 20 industry. years behind. And we're just Not showing words. if you do everything right and you've listened to the Chris Ad philosophy, this is what could happen. Oh, you missed No, it. no, we, we gotta, we, we're, we're wrapping up here. Oh, okay. Never mind, you don't get to see that video. Right, there's Sherry. <laughs> Hi there, it's Sherry from Taunton Village. After one name award. And okay. this is me at my office in the Bahamas. Actually, John did call me in the Bahamas. And I, I, I was just effing with him. I go, I'm to send him a picture of me like working in the Bahamas, managing my office. Yeah, that's what he does. I, I, by the way, I haven't, I've never worked a day in this office myself. Yeah. So that's so, all it's Yeah, so that's about it. So that's all I'm going to say. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you didn't show her a video. No, because there are too many rapid. Oh, okay. <laughs> that was good. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.